Radio Tirana. From now on, Radio Tirana listeners, you can hear us only on internet in the following address. Rotosha.ar slash radio dot tirana dash three. Hello listeners, this is Radio Tirana Broadcast in English. Join us with the news, press review and finally profound. Here is the news. President of the Republic, Ilir Meta, received yesterday in a meeting a delegation of the International Organization World Council on Tolerance and Peace. This visit of the delegation comes in the framework of the second plenary session of the International Parliament for Tolerance and Peace. The head of state during his speech praised this initiative and global platform and stressed the importance of the development of this international activity in Tirana. Tolerance and peace are values and irreplaceable assets for all mankind. Preserving, cultivating and promoting these values between civilizations and peoples is a continuing global challenge, he said. Albania is a contributor to peace in the region and a unique model in the world of interfaith harmony, tolerance, coexistence, where the lack of which has brought conflict and bloody wars in many countries of the world. I like it, Meta. Also stressed out the coordination of governmental and non-governmental organizations at global, regional and local levels. According to him, more efforts should be made to address the most vital challenges that threaten tolerance and peace in the world, which have to do with the fight against poverty and inequality, racial and gender discrimination, terrorism and religious or ethnic extremism. We move on to another top story speaker of the parliament, Graham Mosruti, received yesterday his counterpart from Malta, and Anglu Farouja. During the meeting, Ruti praised the excellent political relations and dialogue at the highest levels between the two countries. Malta is a friend of Albania and strong supporter of its European perspective. The Treaty of Friendship between Malta and Albania will be a confirmation of our existing excellent relations as well as a clear expression of our common will to promote and intensify them in the future said Rucci, while asking for Albania's candidacy support for the non-permanent member country of the UN Security Council for the period 2022 to 2023, as well as for Albania's candidacy for taking the OSC presidency for 2020. Meanwhile, Speaker of Malta Parliament, Anglu Farouja, thanked Rucci for the reception and stress that Malta has been and will remain a strong supporter of Albania, especially in the European integration process. Malta is a credible EU country, continues to unconditionally support the opening of accession negotiations in June 2019 for Albania and lobby for this purpose in all EU member states. Albania, like Malta, does not speak about tolerance, but practice tolerance, said Farouja. He expressed full understanding of Rucci's request for supporting Albania's candidacy at the OSCE and UN Security Council. A radio Tirana with the news. The Albanian Minister for Europe and Foreign Affairs, Dikmir Bushati, appealed the opposition to become part of the important processes for the country's integration, which have nothing to do with the faith of political parties, but with Albania and the Albanians. Bushati said that this is about a joint agenda for approving and implementing the judiciary reform. For every citizen and foreign partner, it is impossible to understand why the opposition refuses to allow the magistrate school to give more judges for the next system. They cannot understand why the opposition is not refusing the vetting process, which is a radical cleansing of the justice delays in Albania, making people trust and state once again. Bushati said in his speech, Bushati informed about the 10th Association Stabilization Meeting in the EU. Albania EU meeting for the Stabilization Association Agreement confirmed Albania's fight against organized crime and corruption and the judicial reforms. In this June, there will be a clear calendar for starting the accession talks 
the same way as we receive green light for starting the preparations, Bushati declared. Since the beginning of the new parliamentary session, the majority has approved laws and agreements in the assembly without the presence of the opposition, and this trend continued even yesterday. Given that the state budget is on the agenda to be discussed at the next parliamentary sitting, the head of the Socialist Party parliamentary group, Taulan Bala, demanded the presence of the opposition in the assembly. Foreign Minister Dietmir Bushati also demanded the cooperation of the opposition to vote on the law on the school of magistrates in order to pave the way for new prosecutors and judges. However, Dietmir Bushati added that the Stabilization and Association Council confirmed the success so far with reforms undertaken, particularly justice reform under the framework of the obligations for opening negotiations next June. Albania has successfully completed the first ever renewable energy support auction in the energy community. We warmly welcome the first renewable support auction in Albania and hope that it will be followed in all contracting parties. Renewable energy auctions provide a competitive selection processes for granting support, resulting in lower renewable energy prices. This is a clear gain for energy consumers. Director Janis Kupac commented the winning consortium is to build the country's first solar power plant in the Akroni region near the city of Lora. The auction volume was 50 megawatt with support to be purchased by the government. Another 50 megawatt without support is to be sold at the market price. The renewable energy auction in Albania was preceded earlier this year by Montenegro, granting the tender for the construction of state leased land and operation of a solar PV project with an installed generation capacity of 250 megawatts without support. In March 2018, the Energy Community Secretariat, together with the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, and in collaboration with the International Renewable Energy Agency, issued policy guidelines to help countries design and implement competitive selection processes for supporting renewable energy. And the last news from Radio Tirana, Tirana 2018 Book Fair was opened in the Palace of Congress. Yes. This is the 21st edition of this event that started in 1991. In this event will be present 95 authors and many Albanian and foreign publishing houses. A professional jury will select the best works. The event, which will last until November 18, has gathered about 100 publishing houses, universities and other institutions. This edition will feature many meetings, forums between publishers, writers and readers. This considerable decrease of readers in Albania in the last years has made the Association of Albanian Readers focus more on reading, which is also the theme of this event. According to the head of the association, Patrick Dumeri, on Saturday will be announced two awards for authors, two for translators, an encouraging award and maybe an award for children's literature. That's all about the news, Radio Pirata. In the minutes to come, press review. We start today's press with Panorama Daily Paper, writing that in the 10th meeting of the Stabilization Association Committee for Albania, the European Union confirmed the progress of reforms in the domain of the rule of law, reforming justice and fight against organized crime and corruption. That was declared by the Minister for Europe and Foreign Affairs, Dmitry Bosat, in Parliament. According to him, EU countries determined a clear agenda for the start of the screening process, a process which has already started between the European Commission and the Albanian administration. On the other hand, Bushati considered the opposition's behavior and its positioning toward justice reform as absurd. It's impossible to understand the attacks of the opposition against the vetting process, which at the end of the day aims at freeing the justice system from criminal elements and restoring public space on justice system, Bushati said. 
We pass on to Napo Daily Paper, highlighting that Prime Minister of Kosovo, Ramush Radinaj, declared that the tax introduced on goods coming from Serbia and Bosnia comes in response to the growing pressure that Serbia is exerting. Radinaj made these comments during a lecture held before students of the Faculty of Philosophy at the University of Pristina. Kosovo's Prime Minister said that the country is having to put up with uh, Serbia's arrogance from a diplomatic level, which includes recognition by other countries to a threat being made against members of Kosovo's security force. This text may last a while, and it can even become drastic, but we were obliged to introduce it. Serbia has not compiled with the energy agreement, so we are completely entitled to introduce this 10% tariff. We lost around 30 million euros from the non-application of the energy agreement and this even leads to the security-related problems, he said. Meanwhile, the European Union is against the newly introduced tariff, considering it as uh, being a violation of the CEFTA agreement. The U.S. charged affairs at the U.S. Embassy to Pristina, Colin Highland, said that Kosovo doesn't benefit anything by increasing duties on goods coming from Serbia and Bosnia. The application of the duties passed rate in Belgrade and this tense atmosphere was also present in the meeting held between Kosovo's President Hashim Tachi and Serb President Alexander Vucic last week in Brussels. The Serb President said that the talks will not continue unless this tariff is lifted. Kosovo and Serbia have entered the final phase of talks which uh, aim at normalizing relations between the two countries. And both presidents have included in their political discourse the possibility of modifying borders as a means to reaching a final deal. And finally, Kohayon, another daily paper, writes that concessions in general put public-private partnership PPPs to will also accompany us next year along with the respective bill that Albanian citizens will continue to pay for the private services that they offer. This is shown in the 2019 draft budget in which the government has included the list of new concessions that will be granted next year along with the respective bill. According to this list, there are tens of concessionary contracts which will be applied next year besides the existing ones. The majority of these contracts have been granted in the area of transport. Here we can mention the construction of the road linking Milot to Baldren or Ikum to Himara, but also the road linking Tirana to Vora and Tumana. Let us not forget the start of construction works for the airport of Lora and Fukus or the contract for the maintenance of the highway linking Kashar to Rogozina and Tirana to Duras. All of these contracts amount to 262 billion lakh. This amount, along with the amount that will be paid for the current contracts, will account for 46% of GDP. Meanwhile, being well aware of the fact that concessions have on the growth of debt next year, the government has decided to be tougher in terms of the accountability. Starting from 2019, the monitoring and reporting for the concession contracts or PPPs will be institutionalized in order to increase transparency. The 2019 draft budget says, adding that based on the assessment made so far, the risk of the public-private partnerships may exceed the legal limit is low for as long as their number is kept under control. Radio Tirana listeners, that's all about press review for today. Now let's have a break. Some of the new music. <laughs> Ad Andale non preparo, ad Amade non resico, ad Accesso.